Mastermind, episode one. Action. Now, ladies, we're talking about marketing of black movies today. Now, by the time this airs, Black Panther will have taken over this world, too. Wakanda. And it will have, to much hype, been out here just changing the landscape for movies. It's Marvel's first black superhero to hit the big screen. It's an all-black cast, and the director is black. The film has been praised for its gripping yet complex exploration of identity, pain, and power. So, what was your initial expectation of the film, Black Panther? Well, when I saw the trailer, I was like, this is dope. Like, this is a must-see movie, you know? It was everything I wanted to see. It was beautiful men, beautiful women, Action packed, like I was like, this is gonna definitely set the bar when it comes to action films. Yeah, I felt the same. I think for me, just because I keep going to South Africa and to Africa a lot, just to see like the African influences within it, mm -hmm. I'm like so intrigued by like, how they're gonna like tell those narratives through an action film. So I think it's, it's so cool to see. Like, I remember when I saw Wonder Woman, how I felt walking out of that movie theater. I was like, is this how guys feel when they walk out of a superhero movie? I feel like I could take over the world. So for black people to have that same superhero image and they can see themselves in the movie, I think, like, it's just going to bring out so much power and feel so yeah. amazing. So I'm the only one that was like, it's cute. <laughs> Okay. But you know what, I like, I understand that because I'm not into like Marvel or comics and stuff like that. The same way I'm not into football, but I enjoy the Super Bowl and I think this is going to be the Super Bowl of, um, of 2018. Okay. Uh -huh. So wait, why were you kind of like, whatever? I'm like, it's cute. Like, I, it's another movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not compelled to see it at all. Almost felt like only reason I wanted to see it was because I didn't want my black card revoked. Oh, no. <laughs> and I felt like if I don't see it, then somehow <laughs> there's going to be a judgment enacted on me. So, you know, but really, like, that was no way on the neck. I mean, no, I mean, it's cute. I'm, I'm always happy to see us break new ground. So that's cool. But I was very happy when... Um, the, the pre-sales was so big because I felt oh, like, right. good, they don't need my money to prove a point. <laughs> so, you know, we could go ahead. And they did have a, an immense amount of pre-sales. Um, and do you think that indicated a hunger, that there's a hunger for black films? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. And then just black comics in general. There's just, like, a lot of artists who are starting to do comic books to tell our stories in general. So this is just, like, one of the trailblazers in it. It's totally it. And also original black superheroes. Michelle Rodriguez a few years ago really got a lot of flack for saying, you know, we don't need a, there, there's no need for a black Superman. Black people need to come out with their own hero. I mean, it was taken out of context, but she's absolutely right. I don't want to see a black Superman or black Batman. I mm -hmm. want to see a black Panther or a black whomever else. Mm -hmm. So I think having also an original um, figure and character adds a lot of substance to this whole thing. Absolutely. And I think also for like fans who are not black, they're down with this as well just because it's a Marvel comic book. Like Black Panther isn't new. Like it was a comic before it yeah. became an actual film and people have been like following the story for a long time. But this alliteration is new because from what I understand, they're going with, um, I always say his name wrong, uh, Tanisi, Tanahasi, Coates. His version, like this is more 
from his version than the original versions. I feel like, you know, creatively, yes, it was created still by Stan Lee, and perhaps they took, you know, the version of uh, Mr. Coates. Um, it's still That's exciting. That's what I should have called him, Mr. Coates. You like how I did that? Yeah, you like how I'm I did like that? I'm like in a commitment to get his name together. <laughs> Maybe we could get him on here and then he can tell it to me I personally. I think he's busy. Yeah, he ain't that busy. He lives in Brooklyn, right? Actually, he lives in Paris now. Oh, well, he, wow. could, he comes home. Come home. <laughs> Come home. I know the real estate course was driving him crazy, <laughs> but that's a whole nother conversation. So, but why this film? Why, you know, I mean, we had hidden figures, fences, Birth of a Nation, uh, I, I stumbled. Why, Why not this Why film? Not Why is this film? the film? I, oh, you can answer. Go ahead. Answer okay, it, but I have my answer. Like, the difference between this film and like so many other films that we've seen that we, we love is that this is Afrofuturism. It's not like the past and these hardships we had mm. to like overcome. This is like our culture and like us in the future using technology, being superheroes, being powerful, and I think that's what it stands for. It's also tapping to like the black nerd culture that nobody talks about and or knows. Like there are so many black nerds who are just like ready to come out of hiding. Hilarious. <laughs> I love, I I love black futurism. Did you make that up? Black no, futurism? It's a real thing. Afrofuturism. I like it. I, you hit it that's right. Me. You hit the nail on the head. <laughs> like I all the movies I see are like we were once a slave, or we had to That's overcome this. It. Yes, yes it is. And now here is a movie where it's just a celebration. Like I was flipping No, they're fighting truth. white people in this movie. They're fighting they're villains. The they're they're, they're, right, they're, they're, they're still, fighting an antagonist, yeah. but it's not like, he's also a king. He's the ruler of his Wakanda. world, of Wakanda. Yes. You know, it's not like he's a slave or he's yeah. the butler, or, you know, right. he's expensive. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's, he's just the hero, and it's yeah. a celebration, and I'm looking forward to that. And look, heroes win at the end, so we kind of, <laughs> we know that, you know? And on top of that, you have, like, the woman warriors. Yes. Like, he has a whole army of, like, I mean, I hate to say this, but bad bitches. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> just, like, he's ready to, like, go to bat for him. Like, who? It's that. also a celebration of women. Yeah. yeah. Black women. Of strong women. I'm hoping after we have a little wine, we'll talk later. So oh, take yeah. a trip yeah. and then yeah. we'll discuss this after your business segment. Black, brown, and digital is shining a spotlight on black content creators. And today, we're shining our business spotlight on its founder, Miss Empress Venato. Talk to me about this platform that you created that helps black content creators. Yeah, so Black Brown Digital was founded like four years ago when I was in grad school. And basically, it was myself and my co-founder, Darren Malley. Hashtag, hi, Darren. Um, <laughs> We were both just like angry at not seeing like our peers work being shown in theater. So we just started to have like our own little film screenings. And for us, like our lens is about the other black narrative that isn't being shown. So like we would have a film screening about sexuality and about the trans uh, community, the BDSM community within the black community. And so that just led me to being, wanting to be like a source a resource for other black creators. What is the biggest hurdle for many content creators or content creators of color in particular? Well, I think that a lot of people do not know where to find money to finish their projects. Um, where do you find the money? Like, oh, is it hidden man. or rock that you know about that no one else knows well, about? Well, it's just like, I'm a nerd. Guys? Like, I like to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and be like, where the money at? Where the money at? <laughs> like, I am that person. So, like, you have ABFF that will always provide you with resources. But Stanley Nelson, who makes all the documentaries on PBS, he has a company that like actually helps producers of color get money and help like refine their stories. So when a content creator comes up to you and says, hey, I need a grant, it's yeah. easy to ask, but I'm sure they need to have the full package. Mm -hmm. What does that package look like? Yeah, so for most of the grants that I see that are out there, it's definitely that like you need to know have a budget, have a, a definition of exactly what the content is that you're producing, show that like you have some kind of social profile, and show your development. Okay. Well, Empress, I totally think you're a queen. Continue to rock Aww, on. Aw, thank you. 
Today we're drinking a Vintel's Sunset Rosé. This wine just screams fun. It's crisp and clean, but it's got a nice soft finish to it. It's got hint of raspberry and some other floral notes. This would pair really well with a light pasta dish or maybe some shellfish or seafood. So if you've got a seafood dinner coming up with some friends, you definitely wanna grab a bottle of this. You can get this from Bronx Spirits or Bronx Cheers and the address will be below. Enjoy. Welcome back to Wine and Wine. Yeah, we're talking this black marketing and a lot about Black Panther. So why do you think this representation is so important in our lives? Why do you think? Black people in general, when it comes to the future, have, we just don't see our fucking self. Like, you don't even see yourself. So what does media... Sure, Whoopi was in Star Trek. <laughs> True, true. But in general, you don't, like, it's one thing to see yourself as, like, oppressed or marginalized, but it's another thing you don't even see yourself. So to have a film where, like, it's all about these people in the future and how they're, like, defeating, like, reimagining their kingdom is really powerful. On top of adding elements of African ancestry and culture. And I think there's something so cool about you know, often when you see people of color on screen, it's sort of to fill a diversity quotient and it's not really about their culture being represented. So to have it, as you've been saying, as a, a real celebration and an honoring of what it means to be black or African, it's, that's something that we really haven't seen a lot of. And that's why these ticket sales are exploding. That's why people are dressing up like they, cause it's, it's so different and it's so new and it's so exciting. <laughs> Me and all the homies are going, I'm probably going to cut my hair off and <laughs> start all over, I guess, and get my tribal paint on and just be one of the warriors. Are you going as like a Lakanda? Um, I don't know which uh, one yet. Who, which I character? Like, the idea is just to like look like one of the, the warriors, like the soldiers who like okay. protect the king yeah. and just to like revel in that with like my homegirls stand proudly. And then what you gonna do with your hair on Tuesday? Well, okay, I'm just messing with you. I think it's just so dope to see like black women, like to see a black woman on um, on film with like short hair or like Lupita got bantu knots in it, mm -hmm. you know, like. Ah! But are there any stretch marks? Something I can relate to. <laughs> Oh, can, I, can I see a stretch mark right. on the superhero? I can yeah. relate to that too. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's a woman in the world who couldn't relate to that. True. No, damn yeah. it. Unfortunately, they are, and I hate everything. I want a superhero to get digress. rid of my stretch mark. Hey, that's who I that's want. That's the movie right yeah. there. Woo. Right. Yeah, but I mean, you know, that is something that's been noted and is notable. That is, a, not only is it a lot of black women, strong black warrior women, but it's a lot of brown skin uh, black women. And that's a conversation we've had on here in many different forms. You know, the, the whole beauty image and that whole spectrum, what's beautiful in terms of color. And here, you know, they, they, they are not repping for the, uh, for the, the lighter skin black right. woman in this film. Like it's all like, well, um, it's based in Africa, right? Yes. Well, it's based in African people. There, are, there, there right. is absolutely, absolutely, but why they try to play us, son? <laughs> I think it's like loosely based off of like Nigerian Orisha culture. Don't quote me, but uh, I think that's why you know the casting looks a certain way. Right, like I wouldn't expect them to have Latina looking women in the film. I'm not film. saying that, but I'm like. There's also <laughs> traditionally been less representation of very dark skinned black women on TV. And right. Then, right. So That's the point I was really making. You know, even on blonde hate. hair on a right. light skinned black woman. Like, basically, as what Everybody looks like Beyonce. Possible, right. To make you it said it, not me. <laughs> right. She said the Beyonce reference. And yeah, I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> She, I'm not gonna shout her out. Okay. <laughs> I don't want the beehive coming after my yeah, girl. Yeah, right. They'll sting me up. We love Beyonce and we love Lupita. We love the whole spectrum. Yeah. How about that? And this is just the time where the dark-skinned women with no hair and the bantu knots and the wide noses and lips get to be seen beautiful and powerful at the same time, and that is divine. Yeah, and I would agree. Is. Absolutely. Okay. Shut me up. <laughs> How did you do that? Ah, oh, that's that's me. Me. Well, that, that is black power right, right there, girl. Right. She that. must be a superhero. She must be a superhero. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Here's my last question. 
What you gonna wear to the movies? We know you shaving your head off. What you wearing? Uh, in leather. And I'm what you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> what you wearing, Leah? What you wearing? I will be wearing my regular clothes. Every day. <laughs> nice, nice. Safe choice. Same here. Just uh, regular clothing. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're like a to the back. I'll be admiring. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm, inter- I'm. I'm <laughs> there as support to see everyone dressed up to this movie. I am not dressing up to this. Movie. Oh, I don't even want to see the movie, and I only want to go so I can dress up. Y'all are corny. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Maybe Harry Potter. I'm gonna let. How about? Yeah. Listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about we drink a little bit, and then I ask that okay, question okay. later well, tonight. Then I'll take okay. My- Uh, oh, right. okay. With the superpowers. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Wine and Wine. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you have a topic that you'd like us to whine about, put that in the comments below as well. And if we use it, we'll give you a shout out. So don't forget to watch us every Wednesday at 7.30. Bye, child. See you, girl. See ya. Let's go find you a kente bow. Oh, oh God. God. I can you imagine. <laughs>Next week on Wine and Wine, we're talking fake news with Tanae Hudson, writer at MadamNoir.com. Well, today we're going to talk about fake news. And that's something that's been prominent in media lately where a lot of uh, alternative facts <laughs> might be spread right. and people just run with them. Well, I only source my news from sites that I see as credible. Now, if I see something like ghettogalore.net, I'm not going there. Mm-hmm. Because what Ghetto is Galore this? is popping. <laughs> <laughs> it's Says it's editor in chief. <laughs> <laughs>